Hey, and welcome to another episode of the Fedora Studio for Fedora Linux 41 Global Watch Parties. Uh, so we're doing these series as a uh, interview series with various folks and contributors around the project talking about areas of interest and things that have been happening in the last release cycle. So this time I'm here with Aoife Maloney, who is the Fedora Operations Architect and has been for the last two Fedora releases. Uh, previously, before she was the Operations Architect with Fedora, she was a product owner in Red Hat's Community Platform Engineering Team, which is where you'll find a lot of the folks who work full time on Fedora infrastructure and applications. A lot of folks from Red Hat who are doing this work work over there. So Aoife's long time been someone in the community, started her time in Fedora in 2019. Uh, and today we're here to talk a little bit about the release cycle itself, Fedora Linux 41, uh, and some of the changes that have been coming in and mostly like taking a look at this through Aoife's perspective, who is the big schedule wrangler, cat herder, you know, all these kinds of things. So Aoife, before we start talking about the release, I figure let's just give a quick overview of like a day in the life of what your role is as this operations architect, which is probably a title like most people have never heard of until mm -hmm. it becomes Red Hat or open source. So why don't you tell me a little bit on like what a typical day looks like for you as operations architect? Thanks, Justin. Yeah, the, the, that's the first I heard of it too when I applied for the job. I was like, tell me more. Um, it is a very fancy way of uh, saying program manager. Uh, because that is generally a lot of the duties that I have inherited from an excellent predecessor. Um, it is managing the release schedule, making sure those changes that people would like to propose to the Fedora project get processed in, in, in the way that we do it. We get that feedback from the community aspect, we get best those votes for it, they get tracked properly so QA can test, etc. And then they're they're in the release schedule. Um, and my day largely is spent covering those changes that come in, both the new ones and the ones that are already in progress. The other side of it is managing, like I said, the release schedule. So um, Fedora's six month release schedule is kind of aggressive. Uh, it, there's, it's fun. <laughs> when you, just when you think you have a quiet few minutes, nope, there's other things that you have to tidy up. So at the moment I have been dealing with the tidy up or cleanup of the F41 release. So you think like, okay, it's out, job done, CNF42 kids, not so much. Um, there is the two releases back. So F39 is going end of life on the 26th of November. There's a lot of bugs that are open against that. So this last week I have been spending, like making sure that they all receive a warning update saying that, hey, this bug is going end of life in two weeks from now. Uh, it's going to be automatically closed. If you want to keep it open, please re re tag it to the, the next or the current version of the, the operating system to track, etc. So that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. And, and we also have our elections coming up too. So not only are we closing off some of our older releases to make way for the, the current one and the, the most previous one, we have our election cycle too, which gets triggered after every release as well. So this cycle, we will have FESCO, our uh, Fedora Engineering Steering Committee's elections. They will have five seats up for grabs. Um, the nominations is actually open from today. That will open for two weeks. So if anybody out there would like to nominate themselves or they have a friend or a peer who they think would be an amazing fit for this, this uh, committee, please uh, make sure you're okaying with them before the nominate. But um, it would be wonderful to get some candidates in our nominations page, which we will get links and keep an eye on the community blog post for all of that. But we are, have five seats available in this election cycle. So I'll be spending my time making sure that they get populated. And we also have Mindshare as well, which I believe has one seat available for election two. Same rules apply. If you or someone you know would like to, to join the Mindshare committee for a term of one year to releases, uh, please nominate yourself or somebody that you know would be a great fit with their permission. So that's that's kind of the day in, that's kind of what I'm at right now these days. Uh, day in the release, <laughs> covering yeah. it all. I like it. Yeah. And now I have to ask, when you started in this role, all those things that you just described to me, is that what you thought you'd be doing at this point in the role? or? How has that uh, changed since you first started all of this uh, two releases ago? 
So for the most part, yes, the, nothing has come as a drastic surprise uh, from, from when I accepted the job position to now. Um, I had been doing a bit of mentoring with Ben Cotton before, so he explained that this is all, this is the responsibilities and this is the remit of the back part of the job. So nothing came as a surprise, but what did come as a surprise were the things that I was writing off as for me would be quite complex. So like running some Python scripts that would auto generate Bugzillas and things like that. For somebody who doesn't come from a technical background, I was like, how am I going to deal with this? Turns out um, the engineers actually made it very easy. You just type it in properly where you go. What caught me was the really basic admin stuff that you'd assume is like walk in the park, like quite literally like editing the wiki. And I have done it a few times now where the nominations page when I started was like, that will be up and nobody could access it because I didn't click the uh, unprotect button up at the very top. Like it's, it's literally a button. So just those human intervention bits were actually a little bit more challenging than I was, than I had expected. So I underestimated those a little bit. But um, yeah, for the most part, the job is, the job is what I expected. The work is inverted. <laughs> what I thought was hard is not, what I thought was easy is not. Yeah, I guess that, that leaves some things open there for you to also learn some new things and try out some new things too. Yeah. So maybe one more question about the role before we start talking yeah. about Fedora Linux 41 and even a little bit about 42. Sure. Uh, just a fun question here. What is something people would not expect that you do in your job? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I ooh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't know whether they would expect it or not. Maybe, maybe they would, but... I often feel like I play mediator a lot. And I'd, I'd say people do probably expect that. I don't know what they expect that, that from the role, but maybe they expect that from me, maybe not. Um, I find myself in the middle of conversations where people or groups are like separate frames of mind or of schools of thought or whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's happened a couple of times where I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to bridge that a little bit and kind of keep the conversation moving forward in, if not a positive, then less negative or certainly a constructive way. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I'm not calling myself proficient at that either, but it just seems to be something that I've found myself in as part of this job, which I didn't expect. Mm. Well, in open source, that's really a superpower. And for being someone who's working with you for so long, uh, you are really good at this type of skill too. So uh, yeah. let's go ahead and move on to Fedora Linux 41. So really we're gonna take a look at this. There's lots of different ways to cut up this release and how to talk about what we've been up to for the last six months. But really we're trying to take a look at this from your perspective as the operations architect, one of the people who's helping shepherd in all of these changes and mediate things here and there. So uh let's take a look at it from like how did this release feel for you like how busy was it uh you know any like key highlights or things that you'd want to call out from 41. so for the most part um i wish i had like really good data to share with you but i'm not a i'm not a data person i'm not a numbers person i i have mad respect for people who are and i wish i was um but i kind of run off of instinct which is just not great but from from how i felt things went and versus like the previous release it was a really stable good robust release there was nothing that was causing friction too much or like any meltdowns and there seems to it, it seems to have gotten really good positive feedback as well from our like end users both online there were some really cool notable changes in this release like we have a pre-release version of gimp 3 which we have uh, somebody going to speak to this change on that like that's really cool. It 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 works great. There's a lot of cool new features. It is a pre-release, so it's not going to be like perfect. But we have the literal latest version of GIMP in the operating system for F41. Um, and that's very true to one of our pillars of like first. So we're we're right on the money on that one, which was cool to see. Uh the other changes. Yeah, like, like I said, there was just a lot of stability in this release. Like we got more updated versions of PyTorch and Rock'em. We got, actually we got a new Fedora repo query tool, which is always handy to have. Um, 
with the big change landing that was switching to DNF5, that was quite a, a big change that was in the works for quite a long time. I know that team who brought this change forward worked really heavily with our QA folks. They did a lot of test days, a lot of comprehensive early testing, which really stood to it because this is like, excuse me, this is actually a pause because I have The woolly jumper, I think I inhaled a thread. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a big, like, uh, you were on a roll there. Sorry. Yeah, I know this jumper is, like, most comfortable, but deadly. <laughs> no problem. Well. Sorry, my train of thought there was, <clears throat> yeah, with the DNF5, the fact that those guys engaged in our process for testing so early meant that that change was kind of flawless for the most part. I'm not entirely sure a lot of our end users, I wouldn't say they didn't notice, of course you probably noticed, but I would say it went off without a hitch so much so that people were just like, great release once again, despite this being a massive change. So that was super to, to see mm -hmm. the fruition of. You know, and just hearing you talk about some of those things, I was just thinking back uh, to Flock back in August. Uh, a lot of these topics actually that we're seeing come in through now. I remember some of these as sessions that people were talking about, like the repo query tool. I remember there was a session there at Flock. Uh, so if anyone who wants to go and dig in a little bit more and check out that content, you can find all of that on the Fedora YouTube page from all the things that we were up to back in August and can get you the full backstory on a lot of the things that are probably going to be coming into this release. Yeah, where we had Flock was a really great primer for it, for sure. It, it's definitely the convenient timing for the release that follows, because we have all these great in-person discussions and uh, and sessions, too. Uh, so, you know, I'm curious from your role as operations architect, did you see like any big challenges during this release or things that weren't something that maybe we've seen before or kind of things that are emerging maybe just wondering like how how did things go and where were some of the what did the challenges look like during this release cycle uh yeah so look i can't um i can't answer that question without it being related to the the kde plasma change that was proposed uh that was for sure quite contentious for whatever for reasons that i probably don't have the lore to understand um, from my point of view, as a change wrangler, this change came into the queue and was announced. And while it might have been an uncomfortable conversation, it, it wasn't a conversation that needed to happen because it showed how much of a user base was there for a KDE works, plasma workstation. And that is absolutely not to take away from the GNOME workstation. Like That's a fabulous thing that, that we have here. I'm a GNOME user. I love it. Like, if KD, when KDE has their workstation up, I'll still use GNOME. Uh, but I can support KDE's efforts as well, because as the change wrangler who sees the work that they've put forward for the distribution release after release, they do an awful lot of hard work. And like I'm glad to see that while that change caught a lot of fire initially, it did give a good bedrock then for the, the SIG to propose that it as an addition promotion. And they probably would not have had that, they probably wouldn't have had that like maybe foundation or backing or support unless they put that change forward and saw how, how our community responded to it. Some people did not like it, that's totally fine. But an awful lot of people were in support of that. And that kind of gave them, I think the courage or the knowledge to be like, well, okay, this is premature. This didn't go the right way but maybe we can take it in a different way for the project to, to get the recognition. So that was probably both high and low. Low because the conversation got, got crap at times, but high because the group was able to turn it into a positive. Yeah, I, I do remember seeing this one come through because we had quite a bit of a council discussion on this as well. Sure did. Yeah. <laughs> But it is an exciting thing to see, and I'm I'm uh, I've also been seeing the KDE community in other spaces. Like I do a lot of work around events and outreach, and I see a lot of uh, collaboration of our folks in the KDE community. 
So it is something that I think is a nice thing that we can help try to bring those folks in and help recognize the great work that they're putting in to making Fedora Linux an awesome distribution. Mm -hmm. So definitely, I, I know that there were some heated moments, but I think we got to a good place on that one. Definitely. So I know we're just getting to a last few minutes here, but I figure before we wrap up, maybe we can do a little bit of looking into the crystal ball for Fedora Linux 42 and yeah. just take take a sense of maybe not specific changes, unless there are some that are already standing out because there are many already proposed. But uh, also just kind of what you get a sense that the next release is shaping up to look like at a high level. Do you want to start with some observations? Yeah, sure. Like the uh, like this next release will obviously be the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Clearly, like that goes without saying. Um, but it will have a lot of answers as well to like changes in our installer stack. We are seeing a lot of Anaconda changes coming through. There's there's two quite big ones that are uh, system wide, and they again I think they're taking a leaf out of the DNF groups book, or maybe they're all the same people, but they're very clever people. Um, they're engaging with our QA team for test days early. There's actually test days available right now that are requesting folks test the new Anaconda UI installer and share feedback on how, how you felt it went for you. Um, so it's that's the most noticeable change right now in the F42 change set and something that you can actively be a part of feedback for. And that's a great call out to, we just did a Fedora Studio session with Sumantra Mukherjee from the Q8, Fedora Q8 team talking about test days. So anyone who's interested to learn more about that can go check out one of the other sessions from this release uh, to learn more about Fedora test days and things that you can do in Fedora, 2, Fedora Linux 42 as well. Definitely. Well, I know we're pretty much right on the mark for time. Any closing thoughts you want to put out there before we wrap up? Uh. Um, look, I could spend another 10 minutes, if not more, probably 10 hours going through the thank yous and the like much appreciations to all of the folks that like that propose the changes, do the work on the changes. I mean, I didn't even touch on the work that the, the folks who are involved in Python do for each release. Um, it's it both obvious and not obvious. Some, sometimes I suppose, depending on where hot you use Fedora for, but like, yeah, just thank you for making my job interesting to see all of these changes. Thank you for your support when we are coming up to our like our freezes and our change checkpoints and our deadlines. Um, I would ask that you be very mindful of those deadlines as well for the changes to be testable and be complete. Um, I would also advocate as well for pay attention to your release notes. They can be a little bit overlooked at times. I hate this jumper. <laughs> That'll be the the sub the subtitle for this episode. Aoife and the uh, jumper. Yes, my <laughs> jumper. <laughs> Attempted to <my> jumper. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, just yeah, they're they're my only parting thoughts. Keep an eye on the deadlines. There will be a couple of emails a call, go out to remind folks, of course, and thank you for making for the it's the wonderful distribution that it is. I think that is a perfect way to wrap this conversation because Fedora, if anything, is a community project and all the different folks who participate and help out and contribute during the release cycle make our project what it is. True to the Freedom Friends features first of our four foundations. So Aoife, again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us in the Fedora studio and talking to us a little bit about what you've seen in the last release. And we'll see you in 42 cycle. Sure will. Thank you, Justin. Bye.